Hello everyone and welcome back to Lawrence Plays Factorio Space Exploration for another um, brief update. And as you can see I've got some, um, no this is mater Material Science 3 being churned out here, but I'm going to come back to that in a moment. So I've been off being busy around the, uh, the solar system. <clears throat> in the last episode I believe I mentioned that there was a... Um, uh, what's no coronal mass ejection heading in for uh, Kothar, and so I went out there in my spaceship, dropped this, uh, dropped this into place, and it turns out it actually was quite a, um, a minor attack. There, uh, I didn't need any, um, I, I, there didn't need to do any repairs. The, the three big nuclear power plants I've got were easily enough to provide enough power to keep this running and to block out the um, the, the the attack. So if we have a look in here, and I zoom out a bit, it was a little while ago, I've done another stream since then. But this this brown peak here, you can see this is the umbrella defence. So, um, yeah, it was quite a big spike. Um, it did use a lot of power, yes, and, and it. Uh, but my, my systems are easily capable of coping with it, which is, which is very gratifying. I'm, very, I'm glad, it, glad it didn't have to do any rebuilding afterwards. But that wasn't the main reason I came out here. There are actually two main reasons. One was because I wanted to upgrade my um, my iridium in my, my iridite mines and as, you can, as you can see here we're now using the uh, the large mining drills here um, and these are the reason I've resisted using them until now is because they run at about the same speed as the um, as the small mining drills however they take up more space which means for, for a given patch size you can't put as many drill you can't put as many drills in because they're bigger and therefore the the um, product you're looking for the ore you're, you're the ore you're digging up comes out a bit more slowly however as you can see it doesn't really matter because we've got more than enough coming out here and they do also have more space for a lot more modules in them so I could come along here fill this up with speed modules or even productivity modules if it was something I was short of and make this make this whole thing generally a lot more efficient and gen and and uh, produce uh, produce the stuff either faster or in larger quantities um, from the patch depending on depending on what I wanted Potentially, the ideal is the other thing with with these is, as you can see, they've got a slightly larger um, area they, they 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 can dig up from. So this is the area of the mining drill, and then a square that's three extra three squares extra on each side of it. So that means there is actually room to put a large um, a large beacon between each between all of you, in between your modules. Perhaps I could I could have them along a row in between here or something, and then I could use productivity modules in the in the miners, and then I could use speed and efficiency modules in the beacons to keep everything running happily. I could, I haven't bothered, because if we zoom out a bit further, you can see this is a 34 million patch of iridite. There's another one there that's 18 million. Did I put in a third mine? Yes, I put in another mine up here, but 20 million. And these are all completely full. There is a huge amount of iridium available on this planet, so I'm not remotely worried. Um, all these underground belts are because I actually ran out of yellow belts, but had a load of spare underground belts, so I um, used these to save some up for, the, for where, where I actually needed to use normal belts. It's a little bit silly, but it worked. You know what they say, if it's a ridiculous, stupid idea and it works, it ain't stupid. So the other part of what I've been doing here was fitting in this extra belt that comes along here and over to here. And this is a place for a spaceship to land. So it doesn't look, doesn't look like much from here, but this clamp is what the spaceship will attach to. And this underground belt will allow the, um, the iridium to be passed into the spaceship and fill that up. So this will go into the... Um, the spaceship I was showing you in the last episode, which is currently parked over here, and is, as you can see, oh, it's not full of iridium, it's, it's dumped it all out into here. So this should have taken off again, so I'm going to need to go over and investigate why this spaceship isn't doing what it should. But here, as you can see, we've got the clamp here for it to, land, to, for it to use on landing, and there's the underground belt there that will allow it to collect the iridium. So this has worked one way and um, we've managed to bring a load of iridium back up here I think I might have been flying it at least semi manually when I did that so I don't know why this hasn't taken off again uh, I'm going to need to investigate so there are things connected up to here we've got yeah we've got the, it looks like we've got the three outputs so there's this one that tells it to there's this one that tells it to land if it when it needs to land there's these two going through this one for going one way I forget which um, and then these two through, through this one to tell it to go the other way. Um, but yeah, it's, it's not working. I'll need to go over and investigate that at some point. So that was that's most that's pretty much what I've done on on Kothar. We've got the um, 
the system up and running here. Now, as you'll notice, this, this rocket is still here. This is the one that we were using before. So there's, there was a belt, but this belt originally came up here to load the, load the rocket up. Um, and that was working absolutely fine at the time while, while we were using rockets. But this means there's, there's 10,000 iridium in here. So I don't want to start using the iridium that's being brought up from here until I've emptied this one out because then I can get rid of the rocket and that's, I don't need to you put, I don't need to be producing all this, uh, all this rocket fuel, which is presumably, is it coming from coal or from oil here? It's all... Yeah, so we're turning coal into... Um, we use, we're using coal liquefaction to make the make the oils, to make, to make the rocket fuel and everything else. And so I'd like to sort of move away from that if I can, because it's more... I feel like it's far more efficient in general to use the um, to use the spaceships, because they can use the fuel from Asalia, which is a, a more... Where, where there's a, a much greater supply of oil, and I can produce the, uh, the rocket fuel much more quickly and efficiently. So... That's that's. I mean, it, it's working, but it uh, but it's um, it's outdated now. So at the other end, in space, we've still got the landing pad up here where the iridium is landing. So I've set up the priority on this station um, to be minus ten. So very low priority. So the iridium that gets used up by the space station for quite a long time is going to all come from here. Um, all the trains are going to come to here to pick the iridium up and take it off to wherever it's needed. So that's going to be a it's going to, be, going to mean I'm going to get through this. When this eventually runs out, the trains will then a rocket will come. Then when that runs out as well, the trains will start to pick up iridium from here instead. And then I can either replace this with something with a different rocket pad, or more likely I'll just pull this up and stop using it. Or maybe I'll move one of these down there so that we've got um, a better arrangement of, um, of, of of landing pads and I can get rid of the top row completely. We shall see. Um, or actually, knowing me, I'll probably just leave it there and forget about it because that tends to be what happens with my um, with all of my supplies on in um, in Factorio with all my old outdated buildings in Factorio. So that's working nicely. The next thing I did was um, was start work on um, Material Science Three. So we had Material Science Two going on, being made up up here. We've got all of these um, all of, all of the data cards going in, being turned into the into the, uh, into the science pack, into the um, catalogues to go off and be turned into science packs. That's all working fine. We're still making crazy, crazy amounts of scrap up here, but it's all getting dumped into the um, into the station here. And we've got these trains running back and forth picking it up, so that's that's all working fine. We can we can try and ignore the fact that um, each time we make one of these, we're producing something like 1,500 scrap, which is absolutely ridiculous. But we we get we're, we're disposing of it eventually. So that's in its I was going to say it's keeping up. It is keeping up. Yes, we've got um, we've got we've got plenty. We've got enough of the um, of the trait of the uh, impact science uh, data cards there. So then we need to move on further. And for this one, we need we need we started needing these um, bearing things. So we've got we've got a machine here that's um, got a set of machines here that are making those. That's lube and iridium. Nice, nice and straightforward. And now the complicated part about. Um, about about uh, material science three is most of these machines will spit out some of the input ingredients from them. Um, let's see, let's go back into this mode so I can actually go over and point to things. So up here you can see we're producing the um, friction data apparently here. So if, if, when you produce the friction data, half the time it'll spit the heavy bearing back out again. And it can go around and be used again, um, along with some other scrap that, does, that gets shipped off. That's fine. I don't, that's not a problem. But it means you need all of these these sort of um, loopback systems like this one so uh, to make sure you feed these bearings back up here so they'll get used again and as I did on one of the other builds what I've got happening here is that the reused ones are going in on the near side of the belt so this long-handed insert will grab those by priority uh, but then if there's if it runs out it'll grab them from the top side of the belt and those can always be supplied from here so we've got those being passed down um, and then we also have this one, which is very similar, but we're the iridium plates and heavy girders, both of which can get reused. So here, um, I couldn't use the same trick of putting them onto the near side of the belt because there's too many different... Well, I could have done, but I'd have needed even more belts feeding in here. So what I've got is I've got the uh, the two of them being filtered out here, the girders and the iridium plates being put onto this belt the same way around they are coming in here. And then I've just got a priority-based splitter here that's going to take the ones that are coming down here in by first priority, and then these ones to top it up if necessary. So I've got all of this space up to here, working effectively as a sort of a, an overflow that will allow me to um, uh, the, the, somewhere where all the extra stuff can go as as necessary. Now, if I look at these, I seem to be short of ammunition, so I'm going to need to come along and make some. Oh, it's, no, it's the iron supply. I need a better iron supply to fix this up and get this running faster. So that's something I'm definitely going to need to do. But this is is 
basically working. It just gets through a lot of firearm magazines in order to, uh, to run. And that's why the um, the data cards are in in short supply, should we say. We're, we haven't run out yet, but we're going to soon. But that's 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 not too much of a difficult. I sh I'm going to need to work out why the iron is coming through so slowly from here. I guess it's just that is the maximum speed it will come out with this um, this supply. That's a concern. I might need to have another station that's just dedicated to dropping iron off or something like that because the fact this is coming through at this sort of speed and that's still not enough is quite. Oh no! I should, no, I take it back. Now that it's running properly, it, it is enough. I just need more of these machines making making the um, making the ammunition. Okay, that's that's easily easily done. Next one was, uh, what are we making here? We're making explosion shielding data here. So, again, you've got the feedback thing with the uh, the girders and the iridium plates. So I handle that in exactly the same way. The uh, the girders and the plates are being fed back up here and being fed in here. But this time we need um, explosives as well. So that required me to bring in sulfur and, and ice to make water. Um, and then make lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of explosives. Which is all of these machines across here. Um, and, but that, again, is running okay it's, 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 it's keeping up as you can see here um, it, it, that's running fine but there were quite a few steps I had to go through and in fact there were a lot of extra ingredients I had to bring in for this that we weren't using anywhere else so so it's been there was I spent quite a bit of time just bringing it programming up the, the um, base to bring in all the extra ingredients I needed here but yeah there's nothing to nothing too difficult in that. and then finally nuclear data this one's, this one's again pretty simple. Same sort of thing though. Again, you've got the feedback of 50% of the um, of the uranium and the and the iridium plate getting fed back round again. So once again, I've used the, the simple um, priority splitter, and it it's just working. And these two machines seem to be enough. So that's, that's all good. Then down here, we've as, as always, we've got the supercomputers. I discussed in the previous in a previous episode that why I'm not using the tier two supercomputers along here. Um, I could do. They would run. They would run twice as fast. So potentially, I would only need three of them to get the same output of data. But they're expensive enough to make that it's actually cheaper just to build twice as many of the basic supercomputers and just run with those. So I've not bothered. I might be able to do something. I could do something a little bit cleverer with um, modules if I, if I really, really wanted them to go faster. I could do that. And the, the rate, that, as, as I touched on in the previous episode, the rate I'm now building the blue circuits at, I could probably get away with spending enormous quantities of blue circuits to make the tier 2 supercomputers, but I just, I don't think there's any point. These are then, of course, being fed into a, into a station, as, ev as everywhere else. Once all of these boxes get up to 350, that's a train's worth, uh, so we're a more than two thirds of the way full now, uh, only slightly more. We call it 70% of the way full, of the way to, to full. Then once that fills up, a train can come over, and it will grab all of those um, catalogs, bring them up here to here, where they get unloaded into into these chests. And then, as you can see, we've got another belt here, runs along, feeding them up here. And as every every other time, we I've, I've upgraded these to the to the tier three method of making the insights. So now we don't really get any of the um, memory cards passed out these are all just old ones from previous from before I reprogrammed them um, this is a bit overkill to be honest but we're making we're making the um, the insights now in, in the tier 3 method which is a little bit more efficient I have to admit I do I say it's more efficient you get um, you get more insights per catalog that you feed in but given that the later catalogs are more complex to make I don't know whether it's actually more efficient or not I haven't looked into the um, ingredients. I wonder, I wonder if it'll tell me. I'll have a quick look and um, then carry on. So here we go. The, this is the tier three ones. Oh, there's such a long list of stuff. I'm not adding all of that up. Compared to the tier one ones, there's. I feel like there's less stuff in there, but I'll, 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 I'll add those up and um, we can see what we think. And over here, we're building up the science packs as always. Now that this seems to have um, stopped for some reason, so. Oh, there's a shortage of iridium being brought in here because, by the looks of it, is it all being... No, there's just a shortage of iridium. These machines are not running... Ah, right, okay. So it turns out these four assembly machines here are not... are, are insufficient for the for the amount of iridium that's being, uh, being used up to make all of these science packs. So it looks like I'm going to have to come up here and... Um, Reprogram the and, and replace these, probably with one of the uh, the big manufacturers, because these run at about ten times the speed. Crafting speed ten, crafting speed one. Okay, eight times the speed, but you can put a load of speed modules in those and make them run really, really quickly. So that's going to be the nice, simple way of, uh, of fixing this. I'll also need to rearrange the pipes or have 
the um, belts go around them or something like that. Um, so that's going to need a bit of fixing before I get my um, science packs running at the sort of speed I want them to. But the basics are in there and, and, and all working. I've also gone through and done um, biological science 3. And that's it again, is more or less the same sort of thing. So uh, that's bio 1, bio 2. Bio two. So for bio 3, um, no, bio 3 starts down here somewhere. So we needed these little pots of some sort of weird elixir, uh, vitalic reagent. And the, and we need this neural gel, and that's to go into making these. Oh no, I'm sorry, I haven't I haven't done this. I got I, I made a start on this, and then I got distracted by something else. So so I've got as far as making the um, making these uh, the, the third type of biomass. So you've got the normal biomass, then the significant, uh, sorry, then the experimental, and then the significant. So we moved on to purple, then blue, and so th that's what you need to then make all of the the data cards for bioscience three, and from there we can start actually making the. Um, Make, making the catalogs and roll on to the um, the science packs but that's going to be in a, in a in a future episode because I think I ended up going to bed at this point actually because I'd uh, been, been it was getting late and I've been playing for far too long <laughs> so yes we've got the um, the build up on Kothar we've got the uh, we survived the um, coronal mass ejection and now we're shipping Iridium around by uh, by spaceship there are some stopped trains here what's going on am I just missing a signal no, I'm not sure why this is. I'm not sure why that was stopped. Maybe it's just the sheer amount of stuff I'm needing to bring into the stations at the moment because of because the uh, everything's running absolutely flat out here. So there's just too many trains coming in. I also need to put in some more trains into the uh, into the depot here because I keep running out of them, um, and and it, and it keeps complaining. So I think I need to build that up a little bit more. But these are all fairly small jobs, not too difficult. Um, I'll get on with those and uh, show you in the next episode. Ah yes, and I was going to um, check out this spaceship before I finished as well, wasn't I? So, I've had a bit of a look at it, and well, it turns out the, the reason it's not going anywhere is because if we look at here, here, we've got on this side of the um, spaceship console, you've got the output, on this side you've got the input. The output is, is wired up um, to this, in, this comparator, but not to the other two over, not to the ones uh, in the middle, uh, where it's supposed to, be, supposed to be wired up to these two. If I wire it up to those, however, um, so this should then, from here, there should be a cable going to these two, so to there. If I hook that up, the spaceship disappears, but then it immediately comes back again. And it loops around doing that for forever, so I'm going to remove that cable again so it stops doing that. <laughs> it's lucky I'm in space, otherwise that would have been incredibly expensive in fuel. As it was, it didn't matter. So. This took a lot of head scratching to work out. So I was looking down these down these comparators, um, going, well, that's yep, that's correct. It's not outputting anything. This one's not outputting anything because we're not on we're not on um, Kothar. This one's not outputting anything because we haven't got a full supply of iridium. This one is outputting because the because it's empty. So you can see the output on the right hand side. We've got an empty supply, so that means it's time to go. This one's not outputting it as expected because we're not hooked up to hit, hit the output here. This is the one that's looking to see if we're in space. Um, and we are, but that, that wire isn't there. So that's why when I put that wire across, we then got a tick from, here, tick from here, tick from here, and a tick from here to say we've got plenty of fuel. This went above the three, so it passed those signals over. I was going that 1.1 thousand. That's about that's right. Asalia is 1142, so that's okay. After much much head scratching, I realised that uh, not Asalia, um, Kothar. I, after much head scratching, I realised that that's because this is set to planet, whereas um, Kothar is a moon. So if I set this to 1142 like that, now if I hook that cable up again, the spaceship should just disappear. So that goes to those. Spaceship should disappear because it's got all the conditions met for launch. So that's good, and it hasn't reappeared. That's even better. If we look in the list of things, I don't know how you find a spaceship in this list. I think it's that one. I think it's probably the Naga. Yes, there we go. It's flying along merrily, shooting down asteroids as it goes. So this is completely auto. This is now completely automated. Once all these things are, are wired up, it will do all of this all by itself. It's flying along here. It's using uh, the um, ion stream incredibly slowly, as we'd expect. These um, solar panels are producing all the power we need. 
more or less. Yet yeah, we're, we're we're occasionally touching the accumulators a little bit when the lasers fire. But when then when the lasers are calm, then it's, it's not too bad. It takes five. It's going to take it's going to take five minutes to get there at its current speed. Wow. Okay. So the um the problem with these cargo ships is they are relatively slow. So it's going to take a while for it to get out there. Um, another five minutes. But I'll um fast forward that a little bit and we'll come back to it in a, in a moment. Okay, it looks like we're nearly there. So, <laughs> time isn't going down quite as quickly as it should. Because you might have noticed the speed is dropping, has dropped a little bit, and drops a little bit more every time the um, every time the lasers fire. Because we've now got to the point where we're a bit further away from the star, so we're not able to produce quite as much power as we were at the start of the trip, um, and that means that the um, accumulators presumably are yeah they're starting to well they're going down. They're suffering a bit, but it seems to be that we, yeah, we're just struggling to create, generate quite enough energy to keep the this energy going at absolute full speed. Um, but it's we'll still get there fairly soon. Yeah, there's only an, only a few seconds left. If we now have a look at Kothar, we should see in a few seconds the the uh, starship will um, will appear here, and then we can start loading it up as I was discussing earlier in the episode. And then once it's full, it should then automatically head head back to uh, Norbis orbit all by itself without any other uh, input from me. There it is, and there it is loading up. And you can see on the other side, the um, it started to unload into this um, underground belt, which is used for unloading at the other end. But there's nothing on the other end for it to connect it on the other side for it to connect it yet. So it's just stored at that point. It's possible that when you take off, you lose any. Um, Iridium that's in the in the couple of pieces of underground belt there. I've decided that it's basically cheap enough that I don't really care about that. It's just the cost of uh, transporting it this way, and it's, it's you're only going to lose like four pieces or is it eight pieces, whatever it is. It's not it's not very much, I'm not, so I'm not too worried about it. And then eventually the yes, the uh, ship will take off and fly back to um, back to orbit. So I think that's about all. I hope as a in fact, there's a rocket going with some of it to orbit, um, so we are definitely getting th we're getting through the iridium at the, at the other end at quite a, a noticeable rate. So that's um, quite interesting. Uh, let's stop that before it pulls in too many um, too many rocket parts. Oh, just scatter it just scatters them across the floor. Okay, fine, I guess. Get rid of all of that as well. Oh, and that as well, actually. Right, because we don't need we don't need this rocket pad anymore. So we are going to have plenty of these. Um, rocket sections here. They're going to all get used up gradually for transporting glass around, which is, is fine. Um, I might as well use them for that. It's as good, good, good a reason, good a way as any. Um, and they, uh, and we're still going to be using, generating rocket parts here as uh, rockets come into to these two landing pads to bring out these supplies as they're required. But basically, we're gradually moving over towards spaceships. This is now nearly half full. So this is, it's only filling up at the rate of one belt. But I think that's okay. We don't. We certainly don't use it at anything like that rate at the other end. So I think this is going to be absolutely fine. So I'll leave it there. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll uh, see you in the next one. Don't forget to come along on uh, Tuesdays to uh, to watch the stream, and um, Thursdays when we're when we're streaming um, Factorio Industrial Revolution. I hope to see you at those.